So now let's discuss about the reciprocal function. Right? So what is reciprocal function? When f of x equals to 1 by x. So this is basically a reciprocal of x. Right? So in generalized way, can I write like this? f of x equals to 1 upon ax plus b. Right? So this will be a reciprocal function. Right? And this is basically a special case when a equals to 1 and b equals to 1. Right? So, how the graph of this f of x equals to 1 by x will look like? Like this. So, this is the graph of f of x equals to 1 by x. Right? And here you can see. Right? So, when x tends to 0, right? f of x will tends to infinite. Here you can see the y. Right? Here also y. So, when x tends to 0, f of, f of x will tends to infinite. Right? It means this function is not defined at x equals to 0, right? So, can I say not defined at x equals to 0, right? It means it is not continuous at x equals to 0. So, first discuss about the domain of this particular function. So, what should be the domain of this particular function? Because this function is not defined at x equals to 0, but for all other numbers, this function is defined, right? So, can I say like this? This function can take all real numbers, all real numbers except x equals to 0, right? Can I say like this? So, in this case, you need to equate denominator to 0, right? In the case of f of x 1 upon ax plus b, you need to equate ax plus b equals to 0, okay? And for that particular value of x, this function will not be defined, okay? What about the range? What about the range? So, what is the range of this particular function? So, here you can see y will tends to infinite here and y will tends to minus infinite here when x tend approaches to 0 from the negative side, from this side, right? But here you can see it is not touching the x axis. It means it will not become the 0, right? So, can I say like this? It will give the output from minus infinity to 0 union of 0 to infinite right this will be a range of this particular function 1 by x same i can say for this domain also same for domain minus infinity to 0 union of 0 to infinity right so for this particular function domain and range will be same that is minus infinity to 0 you know union of 0 to infinity right now what about x intercept and y intercept what about x intercept and y intercept are this curve crossing the x or y axis? No. So, there is no x intercept or y intercept here. So, there are no intercept, right? For this type of function 1 by x, right? What about asymptote? What about asymptote? Asymptote is basically a straight line such that it will never touch that particular curve, right? At an infinite distance, right? So, what we can say about the asymptote here? So, this 1 by x have two asymptotes. Here you can see y equals to 0 and this basically x equals to 0, right? So, first, what is vertical asymptote here? What is vertical asymptote? So, here you can see vertical asymptote, right? That is basically x equals to 0. What about horizontal asymptote? Horizontal asymptote. Here you can see this particular straight line y equals to 0, right? This is basically y equals to 0 for this function 1 by x. So, this is about the vertical and horizontal asymptote. Now, what about continuity and differentiability? What about continuity and differentiability? Now, this function is continuous in its domain, right, except at x equals to 0, right, because it is discontinuous. So, it is not differentiable also at x equals to 0. So, can I say continuous and differentiable in its domain? Its domain. So, it is continuous and differentiable in its domain, right. So, this is what I can say about this particular reciprocal function. This can be represented as f of x equals to 1 by ax plus b, okay. We'll we will visualize the graph also, we will see how the curve 
how the nature of a graph changes if we change the value of a and b. But before that, let us discuss about the one more type of function that is basically a reciprocal square function. Right. So, what is reciprocal squared function? Suppose f of x equals to 1 by x square, right? This is what simple reciprocal squared function is. So, generalized way I can write like this f of x equals to 1 by ax plus b whole square, right? Or can I write like this also f of x equals to 1 upon ax square plus b, right? So, what's the difference between this and this? We will discuss that too, right? But what is the graph of this simple f of x equals to 1 by x square? So, here you can see the graph of f of x equals to 1 by x square, right? So, from the graph only we can see that what will be the domain of this particular function? What will be the domain? So, this can take all the values from minus infinity to infinity. But this function is not defined at x equals to 0 also, right? Similar to a reciprocal uh, function, this function is also not defined at x equals to 0. So, same thing domain, it can take any numbers from minus infinity to 0, union of 0 to infinite, right? What about the range here now? What about the range? In the case of reciprocal function, domain and range was the same. But what about in the case of reciprocal squared function? From the graph only you can say that, right? So it will give us all positive values, right? Because it's an x square, right? So we don't have any negative value here. So range will be 0 to in infinite, right? 0 to infinite, like this. Now what about x intercept and y intercept? Or y intercept? Same thing about the reciprocal function also, right? So, here you can see this graph is not touching the y-axis, right? So, this will approach to infinite, but it will not touch to y-axis at x equals to 0. But x equals to 0, this function is not defined, right? So, there is no y-intercept here. So, we don't have no y-intercept, can I say like this? What about x equals to, what about x-intercept now? Is this graph touching the x-axis? This is only possible when x tends to infinite, right? So, here also there is no y-intercept, no x-intercept, right? So, this graph also will not touch x and y-axis just like reciprocal function, right? I am talking about 1 by x square and in the previous case 1 by x, okay? Now, what about the asymptote here? What about asymptote? Same as the case of 1 by x square. So, we have vertical asymptote here, right? That is basically uh, x equals to 0, vertical asymptote, x equals to 0. What about horizontal asymptote? It is y equals to 0, right? This, basic, uh, this line, so it will not touch this graph. Right, so it's a straight line not touching the graph at infinite distance. That is basically asymptote, right? So y equals to 0 is my horizontal asymptote. What about continuous and differentiability? Same case of 1 by x also, right? Similar case. So it is continuous and differentiable in its domain. Its domain. Can I say like this? Right? So, these are the few important things about the reciprocal square function and, and in the previous case we have discussed about the reciprocal function and this is reciprocal squared function, okay. Now, let's see how we can, how the nature of a graph will get changed when I change the value of a and b here. So, first in the case of this one ax plus b whole square and then we will discuss about what is this 1 by ax square plus b, okay. Now, let's go to Desmos. So, first discuss about the y equals to 1 by x. Simple reciprocal graph, whatever, whatever we have discussed, same thing, right? It will never touch the x axis and y axis here. And, right, so it is not defined at x equals to 0, right? So, even if you zoom at infinite distance, uh, this graph will not uh, touch the x and y axis. So, this about the 1 by x function. But what about 1 by ax plus b? 
So first let us discuss what about 1 by Ax only. I am keeping the value of b to 0. Right. So this is the same graph of 1 by x because here x equals to 1. Right. So what will happen if I increase the value of x? Let's see here. Now here you can see graph is getting shrinked. Right. Here you can see like this. So even if I uh, zoom in, zoom out, the graph you can see it is shifting. Right. Here you can see. But what if I just change the value of a to negative side? What will happen? The nature of graph will completely will get changed. Right. So previously it was in first and third quadrant, but when I change the graph, but when I change the a value to negative side, the graph gets changed to second and fourth quadrant. Okay. So very, very important point. When the value of a is greater than zero, the so graph will be in the first and third quadrant. When the value of a is less than zero, so graph will be in the second and fourth quadrant. So this is about how it will change if I change the value of a. Now let's fix the value of a to 1. Let's see. Yeah, 1, right? Now what if I change the value of b to, for example, 2 here, right? Now what is happening here? Now here you can see graph cuts the y-axis. Why is it so? Because if I calculate this, if I calculate domain of this particular function, 1 upon x plus 2, so we need to equate denominator to 0, right? So x plus 2 equals to 0. That is basically x equals to minus 2. So this function when a equals to 1 and b equals to 2 is not defined at x equals to minus 2. And here you can see, right? So x equals to minus 2 will be a vertical asymptote for this type of graph. because that graph will not touch that particular line that is x equals to minus 2 and this function is not defined at x equals to minus 2 and the asymptote also will be a x equals to minus 2 that is basically a vertical asymptote and same horizontal asymptote will be a y equals to 0 only. So what if I keep changing the value of b? So here you can see my asymptote will get changed here right like this. So as of now it is on 7th right. So x equals to a minus 7, it will not touch that particular graph, right? What if I change the value of b to negative side? So this will shift on the positive uh, x-axis because ax minus b equals to 0, then it will be x equals to a b. So this is how the graph will get changed if I change the value of b here. What if I change the value of a? It will get shrink. What if change the value of on the negative side and then increase, then it will get shrink in the second and fourth quadrant okay and here simply the asymptote right that is ver vertical asymptote will get changed okay so very very important point now this is about the reciprocal function now what about a x plus b whole square that is reciprocal square function let's discuss that too so i will keep the value of b to zero first and a to 1, okay, that is basically 1 by x square. Let's see the graph. Yeah, so this is the same graph like whatever we have discussed f of x equals to 1 by x square, right? So it will not touch the y axis. So it's a vertical asymptote is x equals to 0, right? And uh, its domain is minus infinite to 0 and 0 to infinite, and the range is 0 to infinity. So this is for 1 by x square. Now what will happen if I increase the value of a in the positive side like this. Again this will get shrink in the first and fourth quadrant. Right. What if I change the value to negative side. What is happening here. So even I am changing the a to a negative side. This is getting shrink right in the first and fourth quadrant. So it is not changing its nature right. In the previous case 1 by x. The graph was getting changed from first to like first and third quadrant to second and fourth quadrant. But here the graph is same, right? And if I increase the value of a again, it is getting shrinked. Right? So this is about the a. This is about the a. Because even if I take the negative value, the square of this will be positive always, right? So that's why this nature is uh, there, right? Now what about b? Let's fix a to 2 and see what will happen if I uh, change the value of b. So you can see, I am changing the value of b to a positive side. So same thing, the vertical asymptote is getting changed. So as of now, here it is, b equals to what? Just equate to 0. 
ax that is basically 2x uh, plus 3.4 whole square equals to 0 that means ax equals to uh, it means 2x equals to minus 3.4 and x equals to 1.7 so here you can see somewhere 1.7 only uh, this there will be a vertical asymptote right and that's and this graph will not uh, touch that particular line so if i change the value to negative side of b so it will get shifted to positive x-axis like first quarter here you can see the vertical asymptote right so same as you can see in the reciprocal function also same thing is happening so this is about the 1 by ax plus b whole square now what about 1 by ax square plus b right so what about 1 by ax square plus b so just changing square here now as of now here you can see if i just uh, keep b equals to 0 if i just keep the value b equals to 0 then it is similar to 1 by ax plus b whole square what what if i change the value of b so here you can see right so as i increasing the value of b here you can see this curve right is getting shrink towards the origin like this so what if i keep changing the value of b when a is 2 so this denominator will get increased it means that this will y will tends to 0 right if denominator will increase y will tends to 0 like this what if i change to negative direction now this is very interesting point so when i am shifting this b to a negative direction what is happening here see so now this curve will happen right even if i just minimize this here you can see now what is happening here why is why it's like that so when I say 1 upon 2x square minus 2.6, what will happen here? Just equate denominator to 0, that is 2x square minus 2.6 equals to 0 and 2x square equals to 2.6. So x square is basically 1.3, right? But the value of x will be 2 there minus under root of 1.3, 1 plus under root of 1.3, right? So here you can see that particular 1.3 under root of 1.3. So there will be two asymptotes here. First, x equals to minus under root of 1.3. Second, x equals to under root of 1.3. So here you can see, right? So this will basically be uh, under root of uh, 1.3. And this will be a minus under root of 1.3. It is vertical asymptote, right? So this is how the nature of graph will get changed if I change the value of a and if I change the value of b like this, okay? So I hope you understand this particular concept. Go to Dismos and try out few examples. So this will get more clear to you. Okay. So now just go to Dismos and plot the graph for this. First, 1 by 2x plus 3. Second, 1 by 2x minus 3. Third, 1 by 2x plus 3 whole square. Fourth, 1 by 2x square plus 3. And fifth, 1 by 2x minus 3 plus 4. Then again, 1 by 2x square minus 3 plus 4. And see the nature of the graph, okay? For all the six functions. It will not take time, but just go to Desmos and just try out these few examples, okay? So, thank you.